everyone, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a quick and simple fabric key fob. To make these key fobs, we are going to be using a one inch key fob piece of hardware. I have a new key fob tool or key fob pliers that we're going to use today. I'm also gonna show you how to use this clear tacky glue to help keep everything nice and neat and hold everything together. This is a very quick and easy project, but there's a couple tips and tricks along the way that will help make things go a little bit smoother and to give you a nice finished project. A key fob is just basically a wrist strap where it has key fob hardware and then you can attach your keys or an ID badge, or maybe you want to attach something else to the end of it, whatever you need to carry. This is what the key fob hardware looks like. It is a metal little clamp thing with the bar across it and the little key ring. You can purchase these at Joann's or Michael's or other craft fairs and you can also order them online. Very easy to find on Amazon. I'm going to use a one inch key fob hardware and that means it's just one inches from here to there. Just pay attention to what you're ordering because that's going to determine what we need to do with our fabric. Whatever size you order, whether it's a three quarter inch or an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half, it's going to work. It's not dependent on your keys or anything like that. It's just going to change the size of your fabric. So when you get your key fob, measure it across from here and the fabric we're gonna need is going to be four times that width for the technique that I'm going to show you. You can use a variety of fabrics if maybe you're giving these as Christmas gifts or you want to pass them out for the 4th of July or just as thank you gifts, you can choose the fabric that goes with it. I even made one here as an example using my scraps. If you're a quilter and you're making a quilt, you'll know that when you trim around the quilt, there's usually some excess fabric and batting that goes around it, and you can use that excess fabric and batting to make a matching key fob. Or just take your scraps and sew them together. I've chosen this striped fabric just to have a little bit of fun with the colors and the stripes. And I'm also using fusible fleece to give my key fob a little bit of strength and a little bit of squishiness. You can choose to just use plain fabric or maybe you wanna use something thicker like denim or leather or cork fusible fleece. Or if you have interfacing scraps or even batting scraps, anything to put inside. I've also used bits of felt. Totally up to you what you wanna put on the inside. I find fusible fleece works really great because it's fusible. If you want to make your key fob to fit a variety of people, you can just choose one universal size. And I would tend to go on a little bit of a larger size to make sure whoever you give it to. Some gentlemen have very wide knuckles and hands, so you want it to be able to fit over it. Or if you're making it for children, you might want it to be a little bit smaller. I chose today to make mine four inches wide, which is four times the width of my hardware and I've chosen to go at a 14 inch length. Now, if I were making this for myself, I would probably go a little smaller if I wanted it to be just on my wrist. But as you can see, it's very easy to get on and off. For myself, I usually go at 12 inches. You can easily measure around your hand to see what you'd like. Some people like to wear it like this and other people like to go like this. And you can also use this to attach a little small pouch. So if you have a puppy or dog or something that you're taking for a walk, you can put their little doggy bag on it for their waist and have this hang off of it if you'd like. And for the smaller ones that can be used as a zipper pull, I chose to make mine six inches long. Remember, we are folding it in half, so it's going to be half and a little bit less, whatever you choose. My fusible fleece, I only wanted to go down one section of it, so I made mine one inches wide, which is the same size as this, so a quarter of whatever your fabric is. If I were to interface it, I would use the entire width to give it a nice structure to it. If you want this to be a little bit poofier, 
and you're choosing to use a fusible fleece, you could add it on as either a two inch strip or all the way. Just remember, it's going to be thicker. We have to sew through it and we have to fold it and put both ends through our hardware. So just keep that in mind. Maybe make one test example to see how it works and then choose your inner material based on that. When I made my scrappy version, I just took widths of fabric that were a little wider than four inches. I stitched them together. It didn't matter to me whether they were two inches wide or three inches wide. I just went that way and if you could see here I had a little bit extra that I needed so I had the little cutoffs from the ends of these and I just stitched them on to make this section a little wider so I do have scraps going this way and that way if you made any of that calculator strip paper with me you could always use something like that if you have it wider or just any scraps you have of course now to make this, I'll just take this over to my iron. I will fold this in half and I'll give it a nice press. Then I'll open it back up and I'll bring each side in to that center mark and give it a press. Once both sides are nice and pressed, and then I will press this. So let me go ahead and give it a good iron and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when it's all pressed. You can see it's to the center and then each of these sides were brought in. Again, I cut my fusible fleece at an inch. If you find that you're having a little struggle to get your pieces to lay in there nice and fold over without maybe coming across a situation like this, that usually happens to me when I'm using a thicker batting. So what I do for that is instead of cutting it at one inch, I cut it at seven eighths of an inch and that helps to keep it away from the areas where we press it. I'll take my fusible fleece over and make sure that the side with the little glue dots, can you see those little dots there? That's the glue dots and you can feel that's a little bit rougher. I want to put that down, glue side down, in between two of these fold marks. I put mine somewhere on the bottom here, either one, it doesn't really matter which you choose. Then I give that a nice press following the manufacturer's directions. Let me show you what that looks like. Here we are. The fusible fleece is all pressed in there. Now, if you're using batting, if you'd like, you can always put a little bit of a glue stick in there to hold it in place, add some pins. I like using the fusible fleece or anything that's fusible because as I'm moving through the next steps, I don't have to worry about things shifting. I refold everything while I'm over at my ironing station and I give it another good press. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch down both sides. I like to go about an eighth of an inch or up to a quarter of an inch down each side and just do some straight line stitching. You can see that here on my flame. I'll just go ahead and stitch down one side and then I'll stitch down the next side. For my scrappy one, I chose to do as I do with my tote bag straps, and I put several quilting lines down through it just to add a little bit of extra firmness and strength to it to give it a nice little quilted look that's totally up to you. If you like it to have more of that poofier look, then you can just do down each side. If you'd like, you can also test out those fancy stitches on your sewing machine and use those either on either side to top stitch or straight down the center. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and go ahead and put those two top stitching lines on it. Now I'm going to be using a 2.0 stitch length. I like to have it just a little bit of a tighter stitch length to hold everything in place. You can back stitch at the beginning if you like. I usually don't because when we're done, we're going to do a little extra stitching across the end anyways. Now, if you wanted to, you could put pins or clips to hold everything in place. I don't mind adjusting it as I go. I'm just lining my stripes up to make sure everyone stays nice and even and I'm lining it up along the edge. I just bring mine around and I stitch down the other side. Now for my red one, I continued by stitching down the center. 
and then I stitched between the center line and each of the edge top stitching line to go ahead and give me those five lines of stitching. So there is my stitching down both sides. It is holding this one side closed. I like to start with the closed side just to make sure that everything there is lined up neat and then I can go ahead and stitch the other side. Now if you want you can come through and go ahead and trim off both of these ends to have them nice and squared off. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I skip it because my next step will be to line these two up. And I'm going to take it back to my sewing machine and about a little less than a quarter of an inch I will stitch across here. You can back stitch at the beginning and end if you'd like. When we do our key fob there and you see the two teeth right here, they're only on one side. So when they're grabbing this, they're only grabbing on that one piece of fabric. There is the possibility for this one to pop out. So by sewing these two together, we're going to ensure that they stay together. And when this gets pulled at all, these teeth will hold the entire piece together and not just one leg of it. If you're making a bunch of these for the craft fairs, you can really chain piece these and do them in bulk. After you fold all of them, then you can go ahead and stitch down one side of all of them, spin them around and stitch down the other, and then line them up again to chain stitch them as you're going through. You just lead one right in after the other and they'll be connected by basically a chain link between each of them. So as they're going through the sewing machine, you put one and then you would go ahead and put the other and you would keep following it through until you were done. Now this part here will be hidden inside of our key fob hardware, but we do want to still make it as neat as possible. If anything has shifted a little, you can always trim off the excess. If sewing this close to the end of both of these together is a little bit hard for you, you can always go back a little, maybe a quarter of an inch or even a three eighths of an inch. Sew it there and then you can trim off the excess and that way you're not trying to stitch really close to the edge. I know as a beginner when I first started making things I did have a little bit of trouble doing my top stitching. You might want to add that extra half an inch or an inch to your total length so that when you go and trim it you still have plenty of space to use it as you wish. So this is the key fob tool that I'm going to use this time in a previous video that I'll link down below in the description box. I had more of a big wide metal duck bill type one. This one has this protective piece on here. I picked this up on Amazon. If you just Google or search on Amazon for key fob tool, this will come up or key fob pliers. It's all going to come up either way. Some of them have a white opaque piece on. This one happens to be a little bit yellowed inside there. It looks a little scary, but I've noticed that many of the people who purchase them on Amazon have that bit of an issue there. I think they put some oil or something underneath. There's nothing here that has come out onto my fabric and it hasn't caused any type of issues. It's just not the prettiest thing to look at. So we'll just turn it over the other way. This screw here can adjust on how far your key fob tool will close. You see it has a bit of an opening there. So if you need to adjust it for anything, you can do that. I like mine to come all the way closed so it clamps down tight on it. And another way to keep this inside is I'm going to use this clear tacky glue and I'm going to put a little bit on the end here. That's gonna keep my edge from fraying and it's also gonna make it stick when it gets inside to there. It'll give it that extra security. Some people do have some problems with this part pulling out. So if we follow all of these little steps when they all get put together, it should help keep it inside. So I will add some glue on here. If you have fray check, you can use that. Some people use E6000. Just want enough to cover it, but you don't want it to come oozing out. So we'll be putting this in and it comes flush to the edges, so we don't want to have that glue coming out. When I put the key fob hardware inside my tool, I like to have it so the teeth side is up. I don't know that it really matters. I just like to see where the teeth are. So when I'm putting this in, you may prefer to do it this way so you can see the teeth that way. Totally up to you. I like to take my hardware and put it into the tool to begin with. If your key ring is in your way, you can always remove that. 
Some people like to close this up a little bit before they put their piece of fabric in. I don't see any difference for myself, but it's something you could try. And I will put this in. Make sure it's going all the way up and that it's lined up inside the piece of metal on both sides. And then I will firmly clamp it down. Now this piece of plastic on here is protecting the metal on my hardware here. If you're just using regular pliers, you might have to crimp them twice. And I would suggest putting some thicker fabric over it to cover it so that you don't scratch it or dent it or anything like that. Now after I take this out, I do one on each side to make sure that those teeth are nice and clamped down and that everything is in there nice. You can go ahead and make sure it's pushed down on this side if you like, totally up to you. If you feel like you've closed it very well and everything is in there nice and tight, then you're good to go. The other thing I do is I have a nice pair of sharp, thin scissors here. I check to see if there's any threads that might be sticking out from the top of the fabric or any of my stitching threads that are sticking out. In this one, everything is good. I'm lined up neatly here and neatly there so I don't have to worry about it. So there is my finished key fob. So your scrappy word for this video will be stripes. I love making key fobs and projects like this with stripes. It adds a lot of fun color and adds that variety and it just has a nice little look to it without me having to do any extra work. So if you need to make a hundred of these for a fundraiser, then you can just use a variety of fabrics and each one could be similar but different and you could have a lot of fun. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today while I made some key fobs, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!